All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen to the fourth out of five lessons for chapter seven that we're going to be looking at with exponents and radicals and things of that sort. So today we're going to be looking at rational exponents. And as you might recall, rational means fractions, essentially. It's a ratio of two numbers. And the reason we're going to be bringing this up in the study of radical functions or radical statements expressions is that all radicals can be represented or rewritten with rational exponents. So our definition here is going to be pretty straightforward. Our definition is the nth root, the nth root of some number, let's call that number a, oops, let's redo that there, the nth root of a is equal to a to the power of 1 over n. So the index, the n there, it becomes the denominator of our exponent. And the other part of the definition is that if I have the nth root of some number to a different exponent, this becomes a to the power of well, the same idea, the n is our denominator, the m is our numerator. So the nth root of a to the m becomes a to the m over n. So a couple of examples that we could do in this case would be to actually just rewrite statements in rational exponent form. So if we were to take the cube root of x squared, we could rewrite this as x with a 2 in the numerator and a 3 in the denominator, x to the 2 thirds. Now, the reason we do this is that this actually becomes a little bit useful in solving equations that, inquire, or that have radicals in them that we're going to be looking at in section 5. Other things we can say is that if we have x to the 3 fifths, we could rewrite that in radical form. So we would have a radical knowing because it is a fraction. The index of our radical is going to be our denominator, so that's going to be a 5. And on the inside is going to be x to the third power. Now there are technically two ways to write this statement. We could say x cubed on the inside. Or we could say it is the fifth root of x all to the third power. Both of these statements are exactly the same thing with the 3 on the inside or the 3 on the very, very outside like this. What if we had a decimal? y to the 2.5? Well, because this is all about fractions, you need to rewrite this as a fraction. So we know that 2.5 is 5 halves. Now we could write this as the square root, because the 2 is our index, of y to the fifth power. So what if it was a little bit different? What if it had a negative exponent? What if we had x to the power of negative 0 0.5? So this throws the decimal and the negative into the same statement. So the decimal re is rewritten as 1 half. So that means we have a square root. But we also have a negative. So one thing that we have to remember is that negative exponents take the reciprocal of the number. So instead of x, we have 1 over x to the positive 1 half, and then we rewrite this as 1 over radical x. Square root of x because this 2 is the index, and just x to the first because the 1 in the numerator. All right, so that's enough with rewriting. Let's take a look at what it means to simplify an expression. So let's say we had 
16 to the 1 half power. Let's start very easy. If I told you I had 16 to the 1 half power, that's the same thing as saying the square root of 16, and we know, we all know this to be the number 4. All right, so that's not too bad. But what if we had 64 to the 2 thirds power? So we're going to look at this in two different ways. We're going to look at this as saying this is the cube root of 64 squared. Those parentheses aren't actually necessary. I'm not sure why I wrote those. Because this is what this says. This says 64. The 3 is my denominator, so that's my index. The 2 is my numerator, so it's a square. Now here's the problem. 64 to the second power is very large and might be a number we don't know how to find the cube root of. But I do know that 64 is a perfect cube, so I'm going to look at this the second way as we listed on the last page. Rather than saying the cube root of 64 squared, it's actually more beneficial to us to find the cube root of 64 and then square it. So here we get the cube root of 64, which is 4. The square comes along, so we get cube root of 64, which is 4. And then we square it, and we get the answer of 16. So therefore, 64 to the 2 thirds power is 16, and we never touched a calculator. And that's the idea here, is to be able to do this without requiring a calculator. Let's try another one. Let's take, oops, not that. We're going to use the exponent. So we're going to say negative 32 to the power of 3 fifths. So we're going to rewrite this. Because we are looking for the fifth root of negative 32, and I know 32 is a power of 5, it's 2 to the fifth power. That means it's going to be more beneficial to us to do the radical piece first and then cube the answer after. So the fifth root of negative 32 is negative 2. And then we need to cube that answer, and we get an answer of negative 8. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. could also look at, let's look at a decimal example before we move on to the next type. If we were to take 4 to the negative 3.5. So we're going to throw the decimal and the negative into the same question here. So let's rewrite this as a fraction. We know that 3.5 is the same thing as 7 halves. It has a negative exponent, so we're going to find the reciprocal which is just 1 over 4 to the 7 halves. And then we're going to follow the same process that we learned a, as we were just doing. And we're going to rewrite this as 1 over the square root of 4, because the index is 2, to the 7th power. The square root of 4 is 2, so we get 1 over 2 to the 7th power. And 2 to the 7th power is 128. And therefore, we're going to have 1 over 128, and we have our answer. All right. Let's take a look at simplifying with the variables. So let's say we had negative 32 y to the 15th, oops, y to the 15th, to the power of 1 fifth. All right, so that's an exponent of 1 fifth. And one of our properties for exponents says that if I have a product of two things 
to some exponent, the first thing gets the exponent and the second thing gets the exponent. So it's kind of like the distributive property, same kind of idea. So we're going to essentially distribute this one-fifth power to both pieces. So I have negative 32 to the one-fifth times y to the 15th to the one-fifth. So the reason I wrote it like this is that yes, we could write it as one big fifth root, fifth root problem, or we could think about our exponent properties. If I have a variable to some number to another exponent, so if I have a number to an exponent inside parentheses to another exponent, I get to multiply the exponents together. So I get, oops, not m, I get x, to the power of n times m. Now, it doesn't make sense here on the numbers, but it does make a lot of sense on this particular variable. So let's leave the number alone for just a second and think about this exponent property. If we were to have y to the 15th to the power of 5, that means I get to multiply the exponents. And we get 15 over 1 times 1 over 15 gets 15 over 5. And in this particular case, this is very nice for us because y to the 15 over 5 becomes y to the third because 15 over 5 is 3. So the variables are very simple to simplify here. And then on the numbers, we just have to do the same idea we were doing a minute ago, taking the fifth root of negative 32, which we've actually already done. Taking the fifth root of negative 32, I get negative 2 times y to the third power. And we have our final answer. Let's take a look at another one, just kind of like this without the numbers here. Here we have x to the 2 thirds y to the negative 1 sixth to the power of negative 12. So we need to take care of the outside exponent, which means we need to distribute it in. And if you think about this, this is both properties that I wrote up on the board or up on the top there earlier. So I get to multiply the exponents. So x to the 2 thirds times the negative 12. So the 2 thirds times negative 12 gets me a negative 24 over 3. The negative 1 over 6 times negative 12 gets me a positive 12 over 6. And if we were to reduce these fractions, this becomes x to the negative 8 and y to the positive 2. Now, one of the things that we learned in variables and exponents is that we're not allowed to leave a negative exponent in our answer. So the negative exponent says find the reciprocal. So that's going to be 1 over x to the 8 times y squared. And we just like to finish that up saying that's y squared over 1. So this becomes y squared over x to the 8. And that would be a final answer. All right, because this is a stepping stone lesson into lesson five, this is actually the completion of this particular lesson. Hope you can bring this into lesson five, and I hope you learned a little bit of stuff today. I will see you guys later.